Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. This is Any Kind Media. We are your hosts. My name is Ocean Sibiono. I'm Taylor Vera. And in this episode, we are going to give our take on the newly released sequel to the original Top Gun titled Top Gun Maverick. This movie came out on May 27th, which is yesterday for us. Um, here in Hawaii, the time difference actually allows us to watch the movie on the 26th yeah. uh, because of you know time difference. So we were able to actually watch it Thursday, and uh, the movie was so just so amazing that we decided we had to watch it again. <laughs> and so literally we <laughs> went today and we watched... Uh, Top Gun Maverick for a second time and we are recording now after our second showing of the movie with it fresh in our minds and we're ready to give you guys our take. As always we'll start off with our spoiler free review, give you guys a honest and uh, concise review then we'll give it a score and then we'll dive into some spoilers uh, so Taylor give me your overall impression spoiler free of the movie. Okay. I'll try my best. <laughs> All right. So, Top Gun. Top Cruise, Top Gun. The original came out in 1986. Was it really 1986? Yeah. 86? I thought it was later than that. I thought it was a 90s movie. I mean, that's what it looks like when I look it up. 1986. But, wow. Yeah. So, we're looking at over 30 years. Yeah. That, was that 36 years? Yep, I think so. Thirty six years. I think the there's a thing in the beginning that like talks about how long they've been making this right. particular one. Um but that's how long it's been since the original. Uh I just wanna say like before before I really get into this, I just wanna give uh, a really big thank you to everybody that was involved with this yes. movie. Um I know the these kinds of movies are not for everybody. And so, like, that's fine. If you, like, if you don't care about, like, the military or, like, action movies and all that kind of stuff and, like, flying and pilots and stuff, totally understand. It's fine. But for those of you who like or love Top Gun, this movie, especially considering how long it's been since the original came out, and at least for, like, me and you and other people like us that have grown up and watched this many times throughout our lives... This movie is quite possibly one of, uh, I mean, I don't know. I could be just just because I'm still living off the high the on this high movie. I am just watching it. This, to me, honestly feels like one of the best sequels to a movie that has ever come out. And on many ways, especially I, as the big of time difference has been, because it's usually very difficult Right. To live up to like you know the uh, like the nostalgia standard or the, yeah. you know like the the legend usually right. of what an original you know can be. This movie, um, I like I I can't say for sure yet, but I I almost feel like it surpasses it. Okay, so uh, it's funny that you say that because. I feel the exact same way. I feel like a lot of sequels to movies fall short. And it's something that we've grown accustomed to. Right. right? Throughout cinema history, we've grown accustomed to the original movie coming out, being amazing, and then a sequel coming out. And it's good. You know, it's enjoyable. It's fun, whatever. But it just doesn't quite live up to, to like you said, the legend or the standard that the first movie set. However, with that being said, this movie, I like again, it, it might just be me being high off of watching it for the second time in two days, but I I might like if you sat me down and put a gun to my head right now and said which movie is better, Top Gun or Top Gun Maverick, I'd probably pick Top Gun Maverick. Right. And it because it was so good. And uh, like I, I do want to point one thing out, one caveat is if there was no Top Gun, I wouldn't say that this movie can hold as much value. It's because the original right. existed I agree. that this gets elevated. 
Yes. Even though, I will say, even if you have not seen the original, this movie actually does an amazing job covering right. what went on in the first movie. So you don't even need to spend the extra time viewing it, even though you should. You should, for sure, because, de- like you said, it elevates, right? It Knowing what happened in the first movie and experiencing, not just knowing, but experiencing what happened in the first movie right. elevates the emotion and the... Um, it, it deepens the effect that this movie has on you. And uh, I I agree with you. My wife has never seen the original Top Gun. Um, I don't know how that happened. Don't, don't get me started. But <laughs> she yeah. hasn't seen it. And she, you know, after sp- seeing it on Thursday and sitting down with her, and she wasn't lost. Like She was like, yeah, I understand everything. And I, I can tell, you know, that it probably just didn't have as big of an impact on her because she didn't see the first one. But like you said, it's not like she was lost and didn't right. understand what was happening. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really good. Um, this is another one of those movies that's really hard to talk about spoiler-free um because there's just so much stuff in there and we this is another one of the we keep saying it but this is another one of those movies that you need to experience in an, in its full right yeah. like this is a movie that you should see on the biggest screen in the biggest theater with the best technology that you can possibly find yeah. and 100%. and uh and with no prior knowledge without knowing anything that's yeah. going to happen or like a lot of times people tell you, oh, that movie was super good. And then you go into it. It's just, even though you don't know what happens, you're expecting it to be super good. So, you know, go see the movie in, in its full glory. Uh, because this movie, this movie blew me away. It was, it was incredible. Everything from cinematography to sound effects to the storyline to the acting, everything. Everything, yeah, everything was top notch. Is, yeah, it was literally all Top Gun. Like it was, yeah, it was literally it was top everything of the was line. Top Gun. <laughs> yeah, it was top line. Everything, and we'll we'll dive a little bit more into why it was um, after we give our ratings. But I, I feel like I can't really give more than that uh, without spoiling anything for anybody. So for me, uh, in my opinion. This is going to take home the honors of our of my second ever uh, ten out of ten rating on a movie. Um, again, just to reiterate, ten doesn't mean the movie is perfect. It just means it's the best the best a movie can be, um, because no movie is perfect. But this movie this movie blew me away. There is one one thing that I will bring up that I that kind of irks me a little bit, but after watching it for the second time. I was kind. I kind of got over it, and and uh, okay. and you know, and it to me it was kind of a major thing. But after watching it a second time, I I feel like I understand why they didn't do it. But uh, yeah, ten out of ten for me. Highly recommend you go watch. In fact, like the movie is out right now. You can find it at any theater that's closest to you. Go find a show and go watch it. It's one thousand percent a must see. Yep, I agree. So yeah, bottom line, absolute. Top Gun, ten. Yeah, uh, highly recommend going to see it multiple times. <laughs> yeah. And as if if you know if you have the means to, I highly recommend seeing it in the best uh, theater possible. Right. Meaning, if you got IMAX, go see it in IMAX. Yeah. If you got Screen X, go see it in Screen X. You got RPX, whatever, forty X. I mean, we're about we're, we're gonna yeah, go watch it in forty X tomorrow. We're again. literally about to watch this movie for the third time tomorrow in forty X, which is this yeah. crazy thing that I'd, I've never experienced before. Right. So neither have I. Be but I cool. think this is a great movie yeah. to do it on. After hearing or after finding out what forty X is, I feel like this is a movie that is built perfectly for it. Yeah. Like this is a great movie to watch in that forty X stuff. So yeah. costs a lot of money, but. Trust me, I think, I think this movie it. is going to be worth it in yeah. that kind of sense. As far, especially for just you know IMAX and stuff like that, yeah. absolutely worth it. Yeah. Um, Can I recommend it enough? I think they did such an amazing job, and uh, they did this you know in honor of uh, Tony Scott, yep. the original director, and yeah. uh, I think he would be proud of them. I think he would too. I think he would be proud. I think everybody in the cast and crew should be proud of themselves for what they were able to bring to screen especially like you said after so much time because sometimes like you you would think that sometimes the more 
or you would think that it's the more time you have, the better the product will be, right? But sometimes yeah. the more time you have, the more overthinking you do, the more revamping you do, and then it kind of degrades things. But this, man, they, this was the right amount of time. I mean, I wish I had gotten this a long time ago. You know, obviously, it would have been great to have a sequel a long time ago. Yeah. But because of how great it was, I'm not upset that it took them this long to do. No. Um, I think, honestly, if a lot of things, not just movies, but like shows, video games, all kinds of things, were taken as much with as much passion and care with as they did with this movie, as far as, far as like, you know, like yeah. sequels and stuff go, it would just, it would be insane. Yeah, I, I agree. They definitely, I think they're, they elevated the standard of what a sequel can be. And I think there's a lot of movies out there, a lot of uh, studios and crews and stuff that are preparing to start doing more sequels and stuff. And that they have some, they need to look at this movie and be like, I think they're going to look at this movie and be like, oh, we got our work cut out for us. Yeah. You know? In so, case, and just, just real quick before I can go on the spoilers and stuff, just in case you like, don't believe us with like our tens and stuff. Yeah. I just wanted to quickly go over like ratings that I just started looking yeah. at. Yep. So, uh, for Rotten Tomatoes, which you know can be a little hit or miss and stuff. Right. But anyways, Rotten Tomatoes score for this rating for this movie. What do you think it is? I actually know. I because okay. I've seen it, so I know the audience or the I know the critic score this is a ninety seven, which I believe is the highest rated movie so far this year. Um, the and it's audience of, score. The audience 99. score is ninety nine percent. Ninety nine percent. So, what is uh? I I know you have the IMDb. Yeah. So the IMDb up, so is, is uh, eight point seven. Really yeah. interesting. I would have rated it way higher than that. I oh yeah. Like I mean, I would nine point eight. But I'm also biased. But yeah. Even still, like, it's still really solid. Yeah, that's still really good. Yeah. So, yeah, I I think that our ratings are fair. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I I think so. So. Um, if you guys have not seen the movie and you do not want to be spoiled, I highly recommend that you go watch the Please movie first. Please go watch it. Because uh, I think you'll appreciate it far more than what we can talk. Like, we're not going to be able to do it justice, right? Our our take is not going to be able to do the movie justice. So go watch the movie. Enjoy it in its full glory. Then come back, watch the rest of the episode, share with us uh, how you felt, what you agreed with, what you didn't agree with. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your official spoiler alert. All right. So, uh, th- th- I feel like there's so many good things that we want to talk about and so many good parts of the movie uh, to talk about that I want to get the one thing that I had mentioned about earlier off yeah, my chest, get it either. out of the way, um, just so that we can, you know, knock that out and then the rest can just pretty much be good stuff. All right. So, no classic line. Right, for those of you that know, or for those of you that have seen the first movie and enjoy the first movie, you know there's a classic line between Goose and Maverick, where um, Maverick says, "I feel the need," and then Goose need says, "For speed." Uh, the need, and then the both of them say, "The need for speed." So, um, yeah, I I think that's one of the most classic. I feel like it's a, an iconic movie line in general, not just. Like, for people that are fans of Top Gun, like, I feel like people know that line, you know, and for them, when I watched it for the first time, I think what happened was the entire movie, I was waiting for that line to come, right? Like, I was watching the movie, paying attention, enjoying it, having a great time, but the entire time in the back of my head, I was waiting for that line to come, so every time there was, like, an emotional moment or a moment where I felt like, oh, this could be it, I was waiting for it, and it didn't come. And so it kind of, it kind of like pulled me along, you know. And uh, at the end of the movie, you know, they don't say it at all. And so it, I was a little, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to say I was upset because I enjoyed the movie so much that I wasn't upset. I was just, I think I was bummed. I think I was bummed that it wasn't in there. Um, but yeah, I. How do you, how do you feel when you first watched it? How did you feel? Were you waiting for the line or, like, what? Where where was your head at on that? Um, I mean, I would have been excited to to see you know to hear it and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it didn't bother me that I wasn't in it. Um, I think because like 
and this kind of ties into just being like I think a really good sequel is they they weren't trying to make it you know exactly the same right. as the first one and I, I think it's it just kind of adds to the um, adds to the movie and the characters in this one because obviously it includes Goose's son right. Rooster and that was the thing that him and Goose used to say right but I think them not including it kind of makes it, it almost uh you know give us like just a little bit of separation between right. goose and rooster and i think that, that and the fact that maverick in this movie like he's not the same no. maverick in the first top gun not right. in a bad way right like he's, you can he's tell way that more he's, mature. he's he is similar he's you know similar but different in the yeah. sense of like <laughs> same same yeah different he's you know he's the He's the true best of the best yeah. that we know from the first movie. Right. But because of the first movie and what happened with him and Goose, he's he's very different, you know, emotionally. And right. He's got a lot of reservations about a lot of things. And so that... I think I it feel just... like his, his attitude is just different because he's changed. You it's know? just... To me, it's just maturity, right? Right. Like, that's just maturity... And growing up, right? He in the first movie, he was this young pilot that just wanted to be the best, didn't care what it took or what the consequences were. And then, in his mind, whatever he thought was right is is what needs to happen, and he would do whatever he felt like he had to do. Uh, you know, he's a rule breaker, kind of a rebel, all that good stuff. And that's what made the first movie fun. The second movie, he has some of those tendencies, but the maturity level. Uh, increasing allowed him to understand when those te- those tendencies were necessary and when they're not right? right like for him in this movie his main focus was bringing everybody home right it wasn't wasn't yeah, necessarily see, a mission but before it was just like oh well, I'm, i want the them, mission you know right? i want those kills i want the yeah get the mission done yeah. i want to be the one you know i want to be number one yeah but now it's how do we accomplish the mission but also make sure all our guys come back and i, I think that's a it's a really that commendable was, that growth. was one of my i mean there's so many in this movie but one of like the favorite as far as like maverick moments is when he gets called into the admiral's yeah. office and he's like, look, you have three weeks. These are the best of the best. You have three weeks to get them trained to do this to mission. To be a team and complete the mission. And then, and then he just he like, responds and, come and, home. To, and for them to come home. And, and he's it, like, oh, but the, you know, pilots, the military, like these pilots yeah. know that there's a risk involved and they accept that. I and mean, he's like, I don't. Yeah. They're, like, nah, they're coming home. Uh, before we kind of get too far off track, I just want to share why my thoughts kind of flipped on the whole uh, I feel the need for speed uh, line. And I, I think you kind of touched on it in the fact that when I watched it the second time, what I tried to do was just appreciate the movie for itself, right? Try to watch the movie as if I'm watching the movie and had no, I didn't know about Top Gun before, right? And, um, what it did for me was it made me respect Goose's, Goose and Maverick's relationship a lot more, which they like they pull on those heartstrings a few bro, times. This, this movie. A few times, bro. Like, I, this literally gets, it yeah. gets tears. Specifically with times. Goose. Like, specifically Goose. I mean, Maverick says, talk to me, Goose, two, twice, I believe. Every single time it's... No, well, not even just that. Even if it's yeah. him or it's... Uh, anytime somebody says... Anytime he says, talk to me, Goose. Yeah. Or he's like, talk to me, Dad. Yeah, like, Rooster says, talk to me. Every single when, time. The first time I watched the movie, when, when Rooster said, talk to me, Dad, I literally looked at my brother and we both like looked at each other and we're like... <laughs> Oh my God! Stop crying! I'm not crying. <laughs> I'm not You're crying. crying. <laughs> this, is, this is just my eyes are leaking. I don't know what's going on. Make a grown man cry. <laughs> but yeah, so like I said, it was it made me respect Goose and Maverick's relationship and the things that Maverick went through after Goose's death. And I think that if they had incorporated that line, like you said, it would have just made the movie too much like the first one. That and, and they that needed it just, to... It, changes, it would have changed or right. been like counterintuitive it to, the, to the vibe of this right. movie. Well, to me, it would have regressed uh, Maverick's character. Because right. Maverick was trying to move on. He was trying to push past... 
he's trying to learn how to let go, right? That yeah. scene with with uh, Iceman. Man, that that, that, that was scene was heart wrenching so, too. Yeah, so but um, he, that scene of him of Iceman trying to get him to learn how to let go. That's the whole concept. And if he had brought that line, I think if that line had come back, it would have taken a step or it would have taken away from that progression. It would have caused a little bit of like, oh, did he really, if he's saying that line? And so I think he built a new relationship with Rooster, obviously, and knew, I don't know if they're going to be as iconic, but there's a few lines of banter between him and Rooster that I think are like, the his version of I feel the needs for speed with Rooster, right? Like, don't think, just or yeah. just do, yeah, right? Just do. Like, I feel like it's probably not going to be as iconic, but I feel like that was him, like what, whatever it is that him and Goose had that created that, that uh, that line. The don't think, just do, is the manifestation of. Crew or not Cruz <laughs> Maverick and Rooster developing that connection. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Now that we have that out of the way, I'm not I'm not mad about it anymore. Um, I know I I was pretty sad. I was pretty bummed about it, and uh, after the first time I watched it, but I'm not mad about it anymore. In fact, I think it probably made me like the movie even more. Uh, so now, uh, let's get into some of the some good shit. Okay, all, all the all the good stuff. Hey, first off. Uh, what? Let's just go. What is your favorite scene? I don't know if I can pick a favorite to be honest. No. I for me, my favorite scene, <laughs> my favorite scene is Tom Cruise doing his signature run through the woods <laughs> in the snow oh, after no. being shot down and watching Rooster get shot down, and <laughs> he runs up to Rooster and just decks him yeah. into the snow, and he's like, "What the hell are you doing?" I saved your life. You're not supposed he's to like, be no, here. No, I saved your he's life. He's like, no, I saved your life. And he's like, no. What, what were you thinking? And then you told Rooster me not said, to think. <laughs> and then and the Tom or not? Yeah, I mean, but Maverick's standing there like, and, and you can he's tell like, he's like, true. well, yeah, I mean, true. I guess yeah, he doesn't actually like, say uh. those, but you can tell. <laughs> and then Rooster's just like, yeah. And so, and then after that, they're just like, "Well, it's nice to see you." Yeah, <laughs> so that's I think hilarious. It's yeah, probably that's so my funny. favorite scene uh, off the top of my head, but there are so many others that are. See, very I, close I don't think second. I can pick one like that. It was super yeah. funny, but there's just this whole movie. It's just it's so good. It's just perfect to me for me. Yeah, like, I literally couldn't have asked for a better movie for this, especially being for, a sequel. Yeah, for, for being a sequel movie. to Top Gun. Yeah, like definitely, it's, it's just perfect. Literally, so, and the thing that I loved about it, too, is, like, when I first watched it, when it came out, the Uh day it came out, I just wanted to point out, like, I was the youngest person in that theater. Really? It was all, like, you know, elderly people, people, and I was like, thank you for, like, they had, they had, they actually had workers, like, helping some of them come into the theater and stuff. Wow. Because they were just that old, and I was like... Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, I was, yeah, I mean, I was like, people. I'm glad that you love the original so much that you came back out here to watch this sequel. Yeah. And it was so good. And thank you to From the, the crew for giving, giving the people that have waited. I mean, think about it. If you were, let's say you were 30 years old in 1986 and you saw that movie and for the first time, and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And for the next 36 years, You've just been waiting, waiting for something. And then they announced it, what, four years ago, I think, or four or five years ago. And then it got pushed back two years because of COVID and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, And then now you're 60 plus years old and the movie is finally here. Like, good on you to Tom Cruise and his team and the directors, the producers, the actors, the crew, every good on you for giving those people the sequel they deserve. Yeah. You know, like good on you. Like I, I'm sure there are people that were emotional about it. I mean, I was emotional. Yeah, <laughs> so, I was very emotional. Like, I, <laughs> and it doesn't, I don't, I honestly, I feel like no matter how many times I watch this movie, like it's just, it's just so good. So good. Like it, the emotion never stops for me. Every single, like every moment right. that it just, it starts clicking the, 
like the the tears you start with going up and like, bro. look, stop. My heart can only take so yeah. much. Please. Dude, oh my God. Okay, the most, okay, so the most heart-wrenching scene for me, in my, in my personally, is after Maverick gets thrown out of the bar, right? Not badly. Oh, like, it's a, yeah. because he couldn't pay the tab, they ring the bell and it's the tradition it's that you get thrown overboard, yeah, right? But he gets thrown out and then he's walking around the building to go to his car and he sees through the glass um, Rooster playing the piano like Goose used to play yep, the piano. Just, just playing like their him. song. Like, singing it just like Singing him. it just like his dad. And then all the flashbacks that they put in there and the emotion that Tom Cruise has on his face. Oh my God, dude. That was the, that was the most gut-wrenching for me. A close second is when Rooster says, talk to me, dad. Yeah. But... Yeah, it was that was gut wrenching. What was the most gut wrenching for you? I mean, that moment just definitely up there. I honestly, I don't know if I could even tell you at this point. Like, yeah. I feel like I would really have to sit there and like watch every single one and think about it because <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, there is. There's, there's a quite lot. a few moments that are very, very good. Like, I, I even think like. Uh, I mean, other than I love the fact that they brought, you know, some of the original actors in and stuff again. Right. Of course, but newly promoted and all that kind of Warlock stuff. Warlock and, yeah. Uh, Iceman, dude. God. I love the fact that, of course, you know, he, he became the, the U.S. Fleet com- command. Yeah, yeah, command for Pacific Fleet. But the fact that, you know, because of his condition and stuff with his cancer they yeah, even so brought in that real into life, the yeah. movie in real life Val Kilmer uh, had cancer and it did not he it did not treat him well yeah. he, he got messed up and I feel so bad for Val Kilmer cause, but I just love the fact that they they brought it into the movie and it right. blended so well oh it did and yeah. the fact that they were you know they would occasionally talk like text each other and stuff yeah not even saying anything just reading the text between them to right. me and you can feel so much yeah I think um, this is something that I talked to my brother about after the movie. We were trying to figure out, because he had told me before the movie that Val Kilmer's lines were artificial, that they were they used some kind of artificial oh, uh, voice. method yeah. of voice and stuff. However, after watching the movie, I don't think it is. I think that's Val Kilmer talking, because I know that Val Are Kilmer... Are talking about um, when he actually, when he actually talks. talks? No, yeah. that, that's him. Yeah, so... Val Kilmer can barely talk in Yeah, like he that's uh, that's why he, you know, lost yeah. his career is cuz it turned it to like a very painful raspy yeah. like low. He can barely talk. And so for me, like just the appreciation I have for Val Kilmer coming out doing his, this movie. His lines that he delivered. Cuz he's got the, he, the dude's got to be not like I mean to come out and film a movie after being having cancer and being messed up and the cancer just screwed, like it punched him in the face like yeah. he he had a bad bad case and uh i don't to be honest i don't know if he's still like if he's in remission or what's going what's going on with him right now currently but the fact that he came out did the movie even though he's only in the movie for maybe five minutes and then had the the strength to be able to stand up and do his speaking the role there's like three lines yeah and does it so well but it was just, it was, the appreciation I have is through the roof for that. Just because I, I can't imagine what it took for him to be able to do that, you know? Yeah. It must have been a lot of, a lot of strength. So, thank you, Val Kilmer. I appreciate yeah. you. Um, I know you didn't really di- die in real life, but when you died in the movie, I almost cried. Yep. Straight up. I was like, I met has gone. This, yeah. It's gone. Like, and then so when did he, nice, when freaking... When he, he punches, the punches wings his, his wings into the coffin. I, look, I'll admit, like <sighs> it's a little overused. For, but for 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 other people, probably don't really care. But anytime you got a military yeah. funeral, for me personally, and I'm sure for you as well, like I have a, you know, a huge soft spot for yeah. military things, of course. Obviously, because but when the when yeah. man like military funerals or even like you know like hard, dude, law hard enforcement watch, and uh, first responders and stuff yeah. like. It's just, it's to me, it's just so emotional every time. It's even so if I, emotional. Because it doesn't even matter. Right. Even if I don't know them. Right. It's just, because, you know, like for us, like, right, we learned that you're, you're automatically family. Right. Just because you wear the uniform. Right. 
And just so, because you, you and volunteer. even though this is not real, just because of how much you know we love the movie, like yeah, no, again, I, he's I, not I, really dead, but like I felt like he died. Yeah, I felt like it. Like, and when when Val, you know, knock on wood, it doesn't happen for a long time, Val. But when it does, I, I'll sit there and, and feel the same way that I felt watching your watching Iceman go go to the other side. Um, yeah, so many. Okay, so let's get off some sad topics and let's talk about the freaking amazing job they did with the aerial aerial shots, acrobatics. Yep. Good job sh- to all the, like, uh, holy all the pilots, the Navy. Even right, you guys are weird. So for those of you that uh, don't job. know, um, this movie is a hundred percent. or no, it's probably not hundred percent. No, it's not hundred percent. But majority of the shots that you see in the movie are real. They're real, real pilots, shots real of F-18s. real pilots sh- uh, flying real F 18s and, and the, the people the just actors, doing their job. The actors are in the planes with the pilots going through the same forces that are applied yeah, to the body of the pilots. The the G's, like they're they're going through all that. So that's why when you see the, the frames of Tom Cruise and all the other actors of the other pilots in the movie, like it looks real because it is real like yeah. they're they're obviously not flying themselves because the navy would never let them do that but they're like sitting in the back seat of the plane while pilots are flying them around doing the shots and you get the real reaction and just the fact that the production crew chose to do that because it's definitely not the easier way nope definitely it's expensive. not it's expensive I mean not only do you have to deal that with you just gotta get permission right the, kind of not only you have to deal with the price of it all but you have to deal with the you know, getting permission from military, safety measures, all that stuff in place. It's not easy. So this definitely wasn't the easier way, but it just goes to show how much the production crew and the producers and whatnot cared about producing the right movie that they chose to do it the right way. And you can clearly tell that it paid off because all of the aerial scenes are like... I feel like I'm in the cockpit, man. Yeah, like it, just, I, it feels it's amazing. so real. The sounds, the the visuals, the choreography, because everything is everything is choreog- like everything is planned out to the move. Like they, I watched a video yesterday or the day before uh, about how like it took them a year to figure out how to put the cameras in the planes so that they could film. Excuse me, they could film while they're up there, and then on top of that. They had a they had one plane that was just a camera. They just had a plane yeah. up there following. as a camera following the other F 18s and stuff. Um, and then, you know, t- they had to teach the the actors how to go through yeah, the properly yeah, do things and stuff. And how to look and act and whatnot and like I mean imagine imagine you're up there doing your scenes and then you come down and you look at the footage and it looks like crap because you like break character because you're just trying not to die from all the g-forces yeah. and you you don't look right the the producers or the directors be like, all right get back up there and that's more money more time and yeah. i mean no wonder that it got pushed back two years you know but in the end it was all worth it because they produced a to what felt to me a completely authentic uh, representation of what it would have been like to be in the planes with those pilots while they were doing what they were doing yeah. in the movie. So I think it's uh, I think it's safe to say that this this movie is going to be on our mind for a long time, and uh, I definitely look forward to watching it again tomorrow. And then you know whenever it comes out to digital, we'll probably watch it pretty yeah, often. I want to see it again. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be on our brains for a while and um, I'm curious to know what you guys thought Uh, we we are obviously kind of biased because we're both military and we you know we we uh, we are we both love military stuff and just we had that biased and so I want to know like from a from somebody else's perspective, did you guys feel as invested as and as emotional as we did throughout the movie? I mean, I feel like you still will. I feel like you got to, right? Like, I feel like Especially the fan base if you like the first enough. movie. Yeah. Right? Like, I could see maybe if you 
just never seen the first movie, don't care, and you don't care about military things per se, and you watch it, and you're just like, ah, it's, you know, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not absolutely amazing. I could see that, but for anybody that's seen the first movie, appreciates the first movie, or anybody that appreciates military stuff in general, I feel like this is gonna just yeah. That's why I feel like the the only the only way this movie and the probably makes sense for IMDb is. If you don't like the stuff, you probably ain't watching it. Yeah. If you do, you're going to love it. Yeah, you're going to love it. And if you don't like it necessarily, but you're watching it, it's probably because you're a critic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, which you'll probably rate it high because it was really well done. I mean, even the acting was incredible. Like, I... Everybody did a good job. Everybody. Loved all the new characters. Yeah. Loved, of course, all the original ones that were back. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, my favorite new character, by the way, is uh, Lieutenant Bob. Bob is great. Bob is amazing. I love, I love Bob. Bob. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, of the newer ones, of course. What are, what are they? I love Miles Teller. Yeah, um, I, I think I Miles I Teller like knocked he doesn't, out of the park. He doesn't get sure. as much work as he should. Yeah. Um, but that scene is really funny, too. When but Bob, yeah, <laughs> when Bob Bob's is like, oh, what did, what did they call you? Did, like, when oh, did you get here? Oh, I've been here the whole time. And like, what do they call you? Uh, Bob. Bob. No, man. Like, what's your what's call, your call sign? sign? Um, Bob. Bob. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, a stealth pilot. Sorry, I'm a weapons like uh, he's officer. A weapons systems officer. It's like yeah, no sense of humor too. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he's great. I love Bob. Yeah, he's funny. Uh, and Hangman too. I, I actually really like Hangman. Yeah, I, I, know, I was a little. I know he's meant to be. He's been, meant Ice to be Man. like Iceman. He's yeah. the Iceman. He's of supposed this to movie. be kind of a dick in the beginning. Yeah, the over the top dick that and just is full end, of himself, you know, makes it up and stuff. Yeah. But I I loved him. He did a great job. Yeah, I like I I will say when I, the first time I watched it, because I was it a little feels, annoyed, but it feels right. Yeah, so that's that's the last thing that I wanted to say, just just to cover everything is just this movie had the perfect amount of nostalgia and parallelities. I can't say that word, but just the parallels between the two movies, they had the perfect amount of them, and they had the perfect perfect amount of nostalgia throughout the movie while mixing in new story new characters new all of this yeah and it's the perfect amount a lot of a lot of people or a lot of producers directors and production teams look are looking for that right amount because that's how you yeah. make an incredible sequel and a lot of people either overdo it or underdo it but top top gun nailed it yeah. on the mark 100 percent on the mark perfect amount of of nostalgia and parallels between the two movies and with that I, that's I mean honestly that's all really all I gotta say I feel like I, yeah I could honestly keep yeah, going I mean, we could sit here for hours talking about how much we loved each individual scene uh, yeah I but, could literally if we just had the movie right, here we could break it down scene by scene, scene which by the way if you want to see fantastic. us do that let us know in the comments down below and we'll try and figure out a way to do uh, movie reviews that style well, we'll figure. I don't know. Maybe I'll call them, call up, you know, Paramount and ask them to let us do it. You know, they probably won't because we've trashed, talked them in the last like three episodes. But, uh, <laughs> but hey, Paramount but hey, Pictures maybe. though. True, it's different. I think. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we could sit here all day. But I think um, I think you guys, the viewers, have probably heard enough to know that you need to to finish this video, go on your phone, look for a showtime, and go go see this movie because it's. Top top gun, baby. Yeah. It's top gun. Yeah. Nothing much else to say. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for being here. We appreciate you as always. Please like, subscribe, comment, share the video with a friend, and then uh, let us know how you felt about Top Gun. We appreciate you. Catch you guys in the next episode. Talk to me, Goose. Why you gotta go and do that? Now I'm gonna go in my bedroom and cry myself to sleep. <laughs>